SW Leap, which is stands for South West London uh, Energy Advice Partnership, which is why we call it SW Leap. And it's um, a partnership between Habitats and Heritage, which is based in the London Borough of Richmond upon Thames, through, which is based in Wandsworth. If we could move on to the next slide, that would be great. Um, so a little bit very briefly about First Crew. So if you could, that, so Crew is based in Wandsworth, it's a community led nonprofit, it's founded in 2014, and they've been involved in low carbon projects since 2017. Um, but they also work with regards to energy um, efficiency measures, LED, building management schemes, uh, heat source solutions, solar PV, energy cafes to support fuel poor, um, and then various games just to engage people and make them feel a bit more involved in it all. And we actually had our first energy cafe in Richmond this morning at Whitman Community Centre, which was great. And now just to hab habitats and heritage. So you've heard a little bit about what we do overall, but in terms of the part that I'm involved in, um, we started off as Swelling. We merged with um, Environment Trust last year during the pandemic, becoming Habitats and Heritage. And we've got quite a lot of experience delivering energy saving measures across Richmond over a number of years. So we've worked with local groups, community groups, and we offer vulnerable residents across the borough completely free home energy visits, which offer a general tailored an addition of small things like uh, LED lights, radiator coils, and where necessary, we will refer to partner organisations such as CAB and Thinking Works. So next one, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. So what's the aim of the project? Well, basically, we formed a partnership, which is SW Leap. And what we, we aim to do is to deliver and develop flexible energy advice across for vulnerable customers living and accessing services across the London, Merton, Richmond, and Wandsworth, saving money and reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Um, the partnership and trust are key to this. And what we're trying to do as we build the service, which launched only yesterday, is to work with our partners so that we can build trust up, up amongst those communities. We also will give training on energy efficiency, energy switching, not quite at the moment, and I'll come on to that, and related topics to staff and volunteers. We offer work experience for volunteers so that they can, in the future, be the green champions, uh, um, which will take, thank you very much. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. So um, you've seen there what we tried to do, and we really have got quite a lot of reach because both are local organisations and we work together, we've got complementary experience and we understand the areas in which we work um, and their local communities. So SW Leap will offer home energy visits, we'll offer telephone, email, online advice, we'll conduct outreach visits so we can go to particular groups in a community centre for local service providers. Everything that we give is written so that you can use that to help you make services, uh, for, um, financial savings as you go through. And obviously carbon reduction is part of what we want to make a difference in. All of our volunteers are fully trained and we also have two um, permanent fully, fully trained energy advisors, one of whom I think actually is on this call this evening, and they can give energy advice and gain work experience and they will take their skills out to make sure that everybody can benefit from their skills and experience. Thank you, next. Slide please, please. Next slide please, thank you. So this is just, I'm not gonna read it out, you can see it there on the screen. This is the sort of thing that they can do. And it's some of that that I want to go through with you tonight. But what is really important about this is that we work with others so that we can give as, as, as great an impact as possible. We all know that people are really struggling um, at the moment with their bills and we want to make sure that we're there to help. So you can, we can give independent on advice on how you can pay less for your electricity and gas, discounts and grants to avail or whether that be through the council or through government schemes, how you can make your home any more energy efficient. We'll show people how to use heating controls. We can um, help you with mould and condensation, which unfortunately we do find in properties across the borough. We can help you, advise you on energy debt. We can also refer you to the CAB and any other local groups such as Hampton Fund and so on. Everything that we do is completely free. There is no charge for anything. 
the light bulbs that we provide, everything is completely free. And we also, as I say, we had our first energy cafe this morning and that can be done either in person as we did this morning or over the phone um, we're very aware of people's uh, vulnerabilities and issues around co coronavirus and so on so we will do everything to make it as easy and simple as possible next slide please okay so that's what we do but what we wanted to do as part of the climate week is show you that Although everybody wants, every, some people are in fuel poverty and we can give particular help, what we wanted to do was share some of the tips that we use when we go out to those visits to help everybody on this call, the borough, save both pounds, but also reduce our carbon footprint. Thank you. Next slide. So, first question is how much energy do you think we use in our homes? So, we all know that we want to reduce our carbon footprint. But I'd be interested to know how much energy you think households across the borough use. Um, we've got a number of, of, of um, solutions. You can have 19%, 29%, 39%, 49%, or 59%. So how much do you use Richmond? If you could vote now, that would be fantastic. So, so hopefully you can all see the poll has popped up on your screen. So we're just looking at the first question now. So if you click on the answer you think, and then they should all come through to me. So we've got one person's voted. Okay, so it's already voted. So 19%, 19%, 29%, 39%, 49%, 59%. The emissions that come from our home in Richmond Borough. Okay, just a couple more seconds for any more people to vote. Oh, we've got a bit of that. Looks as people are starting to vote now. Um, saying that he can't, you can see the poll, but he can't vote. Hmm, interesting. Should all be able to vote? Let me just check one moment. Kathleen's saying that the submit button doesn't work. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I've got, got definitely some votes coming in now, so um, we'll just have to go with it there as it is, I'm afraid. Feel free to, if you can't access the poll, do pop it in the chat what you think your answers might be, because it seems like some people are managing and some people aren't. So we've got quite a split across most of the answers, with a few people going for 59%, a few people going for 49%, a few for 39 and a few for 29 but no one went for 19% on that question. That's, that's actually quite interesting because when this came up at another meeting, people were. Have we ready now to share the results, Fran? Yes. Okay. Well, the actual result is forty-nine. If we can go into the, if you can click again, that would be great. It's actually forty-nine point three percent. So almost half of emissions are caused by the behaviours in our home. So. This is why we want to concentrate on this, because whilst we know there's lots of other things we can do uh, with regard to transport and so on, actually the behaviours that we have in our home are going to make a huge difference in Richmond Borough. Some of that is to do with the type of house we have, and I know we have a session on Thursday that looks specifically at those houses that were built um, before 1900, but if we could move on now that would be great. Okay. So how can we make a difference to our carbon footprint? So what we want to do is we want to, to have a look at all of the energy that we use in our homes, uh, everything that we do, and see what little changes we can make that will reduce our emission and save money. Okay. Um, and whilst we, we're not going to be able to change, but as a well-known supermarket says, every little helps, and it really does. So it's it really is amazing just how it tots up, how much energy we can save by making a number of changes within our homes. Many of them are very obvious, but with fuel costs rising, it's worth looking at them again. And I'm going to start by looking at how we lose heat from our homes. 
Okay, so this is this is actually taken from the Energy Trust. So this is what's known as an average home. So we've got a three a three bedroomed nineteen seventies home it's that um, we can lose heat from. So we've got the roof, windows, drafts which come from doors and also from pipes, floors and walls. So again, if you can use the pole, it has to add up to 100, obviously. What percentage do you think comes from each of those areas? So how much from the roof, how much from windows, how much from drafts, how much from floors and how much from walls? If you could vote now, that would be great. Can we get the poll up? Yeah. I think there's a slight delay. <laughs> so we've done number one, but we're moving on to the lower questions about how much you think. We've got roof, windows, walls, floor and drafts. So we're looking at question two, three, four, and five. And again, if you can't put them into the chat, uh, if you can't put them onto the polls, please do pop what you think into the chat. I think some of you it's working for because I can see some responses coming in. Or well, lots more responses this time. Hopefully it's working for more of you this time. Okay, just a few more moments. We've got about half twenty five percent. Okay, right. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, we've got a few people in the chat having a look. quite a range of answers here i see so it looks like all of the questions um are coming up for people at once so if you answer all of them at once um we'll come we'll loop back around to the others so you'll have a chance to change your answer but if you answer all of them then you should then be able to submit uh looks like zoom's updated their polls and it's it's, it's thrown us all off a bit so apologies about that one everyone thank you for whoever in the chat was that spotted that well done looking at the answers at the moment very interesting Ooh, it's changing yeah we can see people's answers coming in ah oh, everyone's got the first one right now though so that's good <laughs> that 49 percent you've all got that one right so well done <laughs> Okay, just a few more seconds and then let's have a look. Yep. Okay. So on the roof, there we go. That's the, that's the split we've got there. That's interesting. We've got we've got we've got very very different opinions, and I think that's that's something that. Um, it's knowing where we're losing the heat actually helps us make the decisions. And I think to be fair, it's something that most people probably wouldn't know. Um, it's probably something most people shouldn't know. Um, it's, it's only geeks like me that worry about things like this. So the, the roof, we have a range of, I'm not sure what you can see, but we have nobody said 10% at all. The 13% of people said 15%, 25% uh, was 38%. So the, the, the highest equally with 40%, which was also 38%, and 35% said 13%. So vast majority of people did think that the roof lost a lot. When we go on to windows, 13% uh, said 10%, 25% quarter of you said 15%, 13% said 25%, and half of you thought 35%. Uh, laws and drafts, 
uh, 10% or 38%, 15%, 25%, but the highest was at 25%, where nearly 40% of you thought that. And walls is very interesting. We've got a real range here from 10%, which was 25%, right up to 35%, which was 13% of you. So if we can now look, if we can go, if we can click on, you can see the actual percentages. So the roof is a quarter, 25%, but the biggest loss comes from walls. Then it's drafts uh, and floors. And actually the least, which is quite surprising, is windows at only 10%. So we're going to now go on and have a look at what we can do for each of those areas. Now, this is a much more longer term, everything that I'm going to talk about now. So I'm going to give you some detail, um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. So if anybody has questions at the end, I'll do my very best to be able to answer them. Um, and I'm hoping that Eunice, who works with us, will be able to help me as well on this. But um, starting with walls, which is where we're going to lose the greatest loss. For those of you who live in a, a more relatively modern house, you will very probably have cavity walls. If you have cavity walls, you can actually insulate those. And we work in something called U-values. And what we want is the lowest possible U-value, ideally a U-value of nil. So the higher the U-value, the more heat that is being taken to the outside. So a cavity wall will start, uh, insulate it, you can reduce that to 0 0.6. So it's, it's not, not a huge difference. Um, solid wall insulation, a solid wall starts at a UV, a U value of around about 2.1, and it can be reduced to as little as 0 0.3. So the problem with that is it's very, very expensive to do internal and external. And we do have all sorts of issues around planning permission for that if you do it externally in a, a conservation area. So it's not something that we would recommend For most houses unless you're doing significant work. However, coming onto roof, loft insulation, which remember lost 25%, is a really easy way to save pounds. And as long as you have loft insulation of 270 millimeters, you will make a huge difference. And you can have a reduction of 2.1 to 0 0.6, 0 0.16. So that is one of the most significant changes that you can make and relatively low cost. Windows, double glazing will obviously reduce drafts, also um, reduces noise and comes in a number of forms. So you've got UPVC, you can have secondary double glazing and you can have um, film that you put over just during the winter and take down, which is obviously the least expensive. You can reduce your UV value from 4.7 to 2, but it is a significant um, investment in terms of money and not something that everybody can afford, but obviously something that we would recommend you do if you can. Um, floors, they can be insulated. Again, it's quite complicated and quite expensive, but even making sure that you've got decent floor covering will make a real difference. Anybody who's or um, a wooden floor without carpets will know that during winter it's significantly colder. So just putting a carpet rug with good insulation between the uh, underlay is, is worth doing. And finally, um, drafts. Draft, point, uh, draft proofing is one of the easiest things you can do. And you can't see because you're, um, we're sharing screens, but you can get a uh, draft excluder really simply from any supermarket or most, most, most larger supermarkets and DIY stores. And that's certainly worth doing. And that's something that we would do for people when we went out to do one of our visits. So we can move on, please. So we're going to concentrate today on how much energy we use within our homes. Again, I'm going to be asking you to uh, give your thoughts on this. So you can see here we've got a pie chart um, and those are the percentages and these are the activities. They're in alphabetical order, so no clues there. So we've got cooking, entertainment, and that includes any kind of technology you might have in your house. Heating, lighting, refrigeration, washing and water heating. So which one of those uses the most within our homes? So if you could vote now, that would be great. So we've got cooking, entertainment. They disappeared now, but um, so we've got cooking, entertainment, uh, heating, lighting, refrigeration, washing, water heating. And these are obviously things that we can all control within our own homes. 
So if you fill in the previous answers as well, it doesn't matter which ones you fill in there. So we're just focusing on the last one, but you will need to put an answer for each of the questions um, to be able to hit submit. So just in case that is a just quick reminder for you. We've got some answers coming through now. It's a clear favourite at the moment. And um, I've just seen that Bethany's just put something up for everybody that the council has a grant scheme called Green Grants. Reading that. Okay, just a few more moments. We've got um, quite a clear winner at the moment. Oh, we have, haven't we? Okay, right. We're almost there. So let's have a look what we what we put. Okay, yeah, got a very clear winner here. Does everybody voted, Bran? Wants to vote? Um, we've, 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 we've stopped the, the voting at the moment, so yes. We'll so it's, yeah, 90% of people say heating and 10% say lighting. So if we move on and have a look, I think you might be a little bit surprised. Okay. If we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, yeah. Is the order so entertainment 25 percent takes most of our heat and we'll have a look at why that is in a moment and what we can do so heating is the second and lighting is the third so well done all of you that put those changed relatively recently and entertainment includes if you can just sorry click again yeah so entertainment Entertainment includes all of those appliances um, that have become really familiar to us. So mobile phones, games on consoles. Is to go through for each of those what we can do in the homes, simple things that don't cost us anything that really will make a difference. So if we could just move on, Wade. Okay, so 25% of appliances. The, the thing that I would ask everybody to do, uh, and it's something I have to say I didn't do until quite recently, is switch off all your appliances at the plug. For every appliance, the energy savings trust well, reckon that you can save as much as 35 pounds a year so if you've got three or four appliances going if you've got you, a television you leave them all on standby this is going to be costing you a lot of money so what you have to do is when you take your you plug it out of you take it off standby make sure you unplug it at the same time and the other thing is turn your television off uh, and i have to admit that i only discovered how to actually turn my television off about a week ago We've just been to putting it on, on standby on sleep. And so all of those little things really will make a difference. And the other thing that makes a big difference is cleaning your um, appliances. So if dust and dirt, and it can cost you money. So make sure that you clean your filters on your washing machine and your tumble dryer. Make sure you clean them out every time, really clean them out, get rid of all those bits of fluff so that um, all of those things will run at peak efficiency. And again, I can't show you, but just check at the back of your computers to make sure that you haven't got any dust or dirt there. Take out any bits that you can and really clean them. And that will mean that they're losing, using the least amount of energy possible. Okay. Next one, please. Okay, heating. Um, this is something that I think is very much in news at the moment. This is actually a bit of my energy bill. Um, and my energy tariffs have gone up, as you can see. I, I hope you can see this clearly. On the left-hand side of the screen, as I'm looking at it, is electricity. And on the right is 
gas. And what you can see there is what I was paying up to and including the 13th of October and what I'm now paying. And I think you can see there looking at electricity that my unit rate has gone up from 17.62 pence per kilowatt per unit. Um, and it's gone up to 19.99 percent and 19.99 pence. That's actually an increase of 12 percent. But my gas, although it doesn't look as much, if you look there, you'll see it's 2.83 pence to 3.65 pence. That's actually an increase of 23 percent. And that's pretty normal. Some of them have gone up as much as 25 that's gone under to one of the big ones like British Gas or EDF or E.ON may be paying even more. And you'll also see that the standing charge has gone up. So it's, in my case, it's gone up from 22.22 pence per day um, to 22.89 pence per day, or a difference of just over two pounds, about two pounds 45 a year, uh, which doesn't sound much, but for some people that is a huge amount. And it's gone up from 68 89 pence a year and that's before i even start using anything so this is why we want to show you how we can make those small changes when we're talking about 35 pounds or six pounds or 10 pounds it may not seem much but when we add more together and we consider how much we're having to pay extra every month every day then it's worth really considering so if we could move on to the next one please Okay, so one of the things I wanted to do is rather than, than me just telling you, I would be really interested to know if there's three things or up to three things that you've done recently where you think you can save energy, because it may well be that it's something that we haven't thought about. We can share that and make sure that we've covered it off. If we haven't, then we can add that to what we tell people when we go out. So if you could put in the chat just three top three top tips for reducing your heating costs or indeed we can expand it if you want any costs across the home that will help you reduce your gas and your electricity so if anybody wants to put stuff in the chat I've done it in my um, presentation so anything in the chat now please okay Wearing more layers, okay. Anybody else got any other tips? Only heat in the rooms you're using, yep, yep. Anything else? More efficient boiler, yep, okay. Reprogrammed heating timer to come on later on the weekends, yep. Curtain linings, turning the thermostat down, thermostat down a little bit, using the thermostat correctly, yep. Anything else from anybody? Okay, all right, well, we'll move, we'll move on then, but if you do think of anything as you go through, please feel free to put it up there. So we're gonna look at the top. So we start with insulating your loft. I mentioned that earlier, but, um, up to a quarter of your home's heat is lost through your loft. So loft insulation can save you up to £350 per year on your energy bills. So if you can put it up to 270 millimetres of insulation, it really is something that you're going to notice. We did it actually about two years ago. It has reduced our bills, but it's also made our house seem a lot warmer. But anybody that's got a central heating which uses a tank, i.e. not a combination heater, then fit a hot water cylinder jacket. This is one of the, um, the quickest paybacks, by which I mean the amount that you spend in order to recoup the cost. It takes about six months and then it's paying for itself. Um, sorry, if we can just move on slightly. Yeah, so basically, if you haven't got your hot water cylinder lagged and all new ones now will be, then up to three quarters of the heat will be dissipated. Um, and moving on from that, if we could just move on to the next one. 
lag your hot water pipes. So that's all the hot water pipes that go through your system. One, it will keep the hot water in. So it means that your heating will be more efficient, your hot water will be more efficient, but it will also prevent those pipes freezing in the winter, which is actually really important because that can be an incredibly costly thing to happen. And bleed your radiators regularly. Um, now, this is something that you may think is difficult, but actually it's not as difficult as you think. And what we would recommend is that everybody has their boiler serviced at least once a year. Any of you that are in rented accommodation, whether that be um, rented privately or socially, it must be done. It's a, it's a, it's a certificate that every landlord has to have. Um, and we think of it rather like your, your boiler's MOT. So every year you have to have your car MOT'd, so have your boiler MOT'd, and whoever does it, these your radiators, and that will mean that they are working as efficiently as possible. The heat will come through, and you, one of the ways to test it is make sure that you can feel the top and the bottom of your radiator when it's on. If you can't, it may mean that you need to have your radiators bled. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, cut out drafts in rooms. This is something that, again, is very obvious, but if you've ever sat in a room um, with single glazing, which I have in my front room, you will feel the draft come through. What you can use, um, you can get it professionally fitted, but you can also go to a DIY store and buy it. Um, as I say, if we were to offer anybody a home visit, we would fit it there and then. One of the things that people don't think about is chimneys. So if you're not using your chimney, then you could in consider installing a chimney balloon. They're really easy. You just Put them into the chimney, inflate them, and then you deflate them if you want to use your chimney. And it's not on here, but also make sure that if you are using the chimney, that you're using obviously smoke as fuel or seasoned wood. And you have, um, you, again, you might not think about it, but the heat is lost through a letterbox and at the bottom of your front door. So if you haven't already done it, think about installing a letterbox brush and one at the base of your door. At the end of this, when we've gone off, I'll show you some of the things that we've got that we fit. Draft excluder can save you about £20 per, per annum per door. So again, it's worth doing. And control, somebody said that, um, control your heat with a TRV. Make sure, and again, I'll show you what I've got here at the end, make sure that you've got them set for the correct temperature in every room. So you'll want it higher in a room you're going to be in all the time. But if you've got a spare bedroom or you don't go into your bedroom until later in the evening and you don't particularly want to be hot, make sure that you turn that TRV down so that you're only heating where you want to heat and you're not throwing away heat, which is costing us a lot of money. Okay. Um, move your furniture away from radiators. If you've got a radiator um, and you've got a piece of furniture in front of it, so for example, in our sitting room, we have got um, a sofa in front of our radiator, so we've just moved it slightly away from it. it. It can be difficult, I know, if you've got a small room and you haven't got much space, but maybe think about moving things around um, just so that you're making sure that all of that heat that you're paying for is able to circulate and it is just, it's not basically heating up the back of your sofa or a, a a chair or a chest of drawers or whatever it might be. Okay, next one. Radiator foils. Uh, um, radiator foils again are something that we will um, insulate. The one that we insulate, so we would never recommend that anybody buy anything, is one that's called uh, Radflex. And Radflex claim um, through independent testing that using a Radflex will show a CO2 reduction of up to 49 sorry, 47.39 kilograms of CO2 per meter squared per annum. So that's quite significant. And they reduce your loss to up by up to 45%. So basically the way that they work is it's, it's a barrier between the radiator and the outside wall. And then as two or three people said, make sure that you use your thermostat and time to get the most from your heating. So as somebody said in the chat, Make sure that you've got it set differently at weekends. Make sure you understand how it works. Make sure that you've changed it with the hour if it doesn't automatically do it. A lot of the modern ones do. Um, make sure that it comes on so that when you come into your home, it feels the temperature that you want to. So first thing in the morning when you come back from work, if you've been out, 
so that you don't come in and, 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 and put it up really, really high. Um, because one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is when it's cold, they, they down. What you want to do is to try and get to the point where you maintain a constant temperature. We recommend in the rooms that you live in, so your living room, kitchen, um, breakfast room, wherever, dining rooms, that you would have it at 21 degrees um, centigrade. You might want to have it slightly lower elsewhere. But somebody said about um, putting on more layers. That's great for those of us um, who don't have any health problems. But we do need to be careful about anybody who has any underlying health condition, the elderly. They really do need to have a minimum of 21 degrees. Otherwise, it can start impacting on their health. So think about that. You certainly don't generally want to go above 21 degrees. That's a very comfortable temperature. Um, but it is worth thinking about just putting a cardigan on and not going around dressed for the summer in the middle of winter, as my daughter does. Um, so if you turn your central heating down, it's £100 a year. But as I've said, please make sure that if you've got anybody who's vulnerable living in your home, you don't let it go from one degree centigrade because it could start affecting the health. Slide, please. Okay, lighting, 15%. This is really significant. And this is, this is my favourite area. This is the one that's really easy simple we were kids we were always told to do it turn lights off in empty rooms it's really obvious but we all do it it's it, it's just a question of remembering to, to make sure that you do, do that and swap to led lights um i'll show you some i've got some at the end and this is one of the biggest things that we do when we go out on our visits um it makes a show it's between 40 and 60 watts an led lot, light is six six watts so you're going to save something like 90% of your heating costs. £2.60 £2 per hour per year compared to 26 pence. So it's a huge saving and it's a really easy thing to do. LED lights now look exactly like the lights that we, we, we're used to. We don't anymore have those the C, CLFs, which were those some really trendy ones as well. Um, so it's about £35 per year per bulb. So, you know, it can really, really add up. Um, it does depend, of course, how long you have your lights on for. Um, and if you're switching them off, of course, you're going to save slightly less. Yes, and I agree with Elaine. Schools are bad at leaving lights on in empty classrooms. And also, so are a lot of um, shops and um, organisations. I know the council have tried very hard to reduce their carbon footprint. But yes, do try to make sure you're not trying to use a timer so that you, you turn a light on, it'll come on for an hour or so, just so it looks as if someone's in the house. And again, make sure that it's an LED light bulb. Um, if there's one thing you can take away from tonight, please have a look at changing your LED light bulbs. They are slightly more expensive, but they pay for themselves very, very quickly. And if there's anybody that you know that would benefit from our service, we would be very happy to offer that. Uh, and then they would be provided free. So there wouldn't be that initial cost. Okay, refrigeration. This is probably one of the most surprising ones, 13%. It's actually significant. But of course, we all have a fridge. Virtually everybody has a fridge. There's very few people now in the UK that don't own a fridge and or freezer. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and it costs quite a lot of money, and particularly with electricity going up now. The most important thing you can do, and it's something I have to say that I hadn't realised until fairly recently, is make sure that your freezer is as full as possible, because if there's space, it will cost more to keep that space cold. So you can put in, you can put in extra ice, you can put in ice packs, you can just put something in that is suitable, is able to be frozen, just to fill up the space. And of course, as you need to put food in, you can take those things out. Um, and that will really make a difference. It may only be a few pounds here and there, but at the moment, ev every penny really does count. Fridges, on the other hand, a little bit like cookers need air circulation to keep the food at an even temperature. So make sure that you use all of your fridge. And Obviously, we know that we need to keep meat, um, cold meat, if, uh, fresh meat, if you, if, you, if you eat meat, that needs to be at the bottom. But then spread everything else out around the fridge so that you get that sort of even temperature across the fridge. OK, next slide, please. 
oh and sorry i've missed one um allow cooked food to cool down that's that's really really sensible make sure that it gets to um a cool a really cool temperature before you put it in the fridge what i do is i put a little timer on my phone um, and then put it in again if you put in warm food everything's having to work really cold uh, really really hard to get that temperature down um, don't leave the door open when you're taking your food out when you're putting food in when you come back from the shops any more than you have to my fridge has a lovely annoying ring so i can't because it drives me nutty um, but again just think about that and a thermometer if you haven't got a thermometer in your fridge most new ones now will have them then it is worth investing in that it'll tell you whether you've got the temperature right and make sure that you're not only you're not using too much energy but that you're keeping your food at the correct temperature um, and that that is obviously something very that's important for energy but it's also important for food hygiene five degrees centigrade for a fridge minus a degrees centigrade for it can also be an indication if they're not at that that there's something not quite right with your fridge and freezer and that might be something you'd want to look into separately okay next slide please okay um don't forget to defrost if you've got a freezer that requires manual defrosting as many of us have then make sure you defrost it regularly the the rule of thumb is if you can see more than a centimeter thick of ice um, or you can see any condensation, something's not right. So do think about doing that. Um, if you're thawing food, take it from your freezer, put it into your fridge. Again, it's, uh, it's a very safe way of doing it from a hygiene point of view, but it's also a very good way of making sure that you don't, um, your fridge is not working harder than it needs to because that's gonna, have, that's gonna really help. And something that we look at when we go out to do our visits is make sure that the seals are working. There's two ways of, of, of judging this. The first one is if you see any condensation, it's a sure sign that something is going on. Um, if you have leaky seals, not only is your fridge or freezer gonna need to work a lot harder, but it is going to mean that the uh, quality of your food is not as good as it should be uh, and could have from this really is the last one refrigeration next slide uh, that's it so we've got the paper test so basically what you do is you put a piece of paper and if it moves or if it's not grabbed then you need to have it oh here we go so a well sealed door it will hold that paper tight it's really easy we do it when we go out to our visits um, and nine out of ten will be absolutely fine and it's but it's just it's reassuring to know that you're not losing energy and you're also going to have a fridge that's going to keep your uh, um, food very fresh sorry next one sorry about that Fran okay I've put washing and heating water together so it's four percent and twelve percent so about sixteen percent um, because to be honest the kind of things they all it's all hot water that's coming out of our systems whether it be uh, with a tank whether it be uh, you've got economy seven and you've got um, or whether you've got an induction uh, whether you've got um, a, condens a condensing or a condensing boiler which obviously only uses water when you want it um, so the simplest thing to do and i are in the bath and when you're in that shower Try reducing it by a minute a day. Cost you seven pounds a year. Now, if there's four of you, that's twenty-eight pounds a year. Five of you, 30, uh, 35 and so on. And then, if you can fit a water-efficient shower head, you could save another forty-five pounds a year. So that's quite a significant saving. Um, eco -set settings. Um, they they heat the water more slowly, and so they use less energy. So if you've got the time, use it on your washing machine or dishwasher um, dish machine and dishwasher a lot um, remember as well today's detergents are much more efficient than they were certainly when I was growing up and so you can set your washing machine to 30 degrees centigrade and you'll get beautifully clean clothes you're saving yourself money now obviously there will be times when you need to go for the higher settings if you've got children and they come in from rugby or football of course but for general things try using 30 degrees and also try and make sure that you run on a full load again that's not always possible but if you can try and do it it takes a bit of organization i never used to do it but i do do it now and i am saving money and 
this one is one where I'm telling you to do it and I don't always do it myself. Try and hang your washing out to dry if you can. And I absolutely appreciate that everybody's lucky enough to have an area where they can do that. Try not to use the tumble dryer if you can possibly avoid it. And try not hanging clothes over radiator. Not wearing will that block the heat from a radiator, but it can also cause condensation. One of the things you might want to consider doing is getting um, a heated error or even an error that's not heated and putting it close to a radiator so it's benefiting from the heat of the radiator without it spoiling the, the uh, heat going out to the rest of the rooms. But I do appreciate all of these things um, you have to fit into your lifestyles. And cooking, 12%. Um, that was higher I have to say than I thought it might be but there are some things we can do don't overfill your kettle that's the easiest one um, just put in if you're making a cup of tea just put it on when you're cooking keep the lid on your saucepan all the heat will remain in the pan your food will cook quicker uh, it will save you time but obviously it will also save you energy don't turn on the oven before you need it again really simple uh, and something that seems very obvious but I've done it and I'm sure you've all done it. You put the oven on, you go away and do something else and you come back and you realise that that oven's been heating up for 15, 20 minutes. Again, sadly what I do is, and I will go back and do it. Okay, so that's, that's us finished. Um, hopefully you've found some tips there that you didn't know about. Um, the one that we didn't cover was one that somebody said, which is having a... Um, cur cur lining your curtains that's a really good one um, and actually one that uh, is possible for some people is to have a curtain over your front door that can be quite expensive and it can be quite difficult to fit we had a conversation about that this morning in the cafe but certainly if you've got curtains do like keep um, the light out in the mornings so hopefully you've all been able to learn something from that um, if you know of anybody who would benefit from one of our visits, then please let us know. Um, all of the details will be coming out, I gather, after this. Uh, if you'd like to come to one of our energy cafes, um, we can uh, make sure that you know when those are. We're hoping to run some on a regular basis at Wickham Community Centre. Um, and we will be sending out a couple of top tips um, leaflets, which is based around what we've been saying to everybody who has registered. And I guess any questions, any thoughts um, to find to, to finish. And thank you very much for listening for me. Uh, yes, uh, we can certainly access those slides afterwards. We can get those out to you in a PDF form. Um, no problem at all. Any other questions? Oh, great. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, yes, um, we do. That's one of the benefits. We do understand Richmond area. Um, Personally, I've lived here all my life um, and all of our volunteers will be local. And so they do understand its eccentricities, if you like. Um, and we are very aware of the type of housing stock that we have here, which is why it can be really difficult to make some of those changes. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, Helen. Um, there's one here about uh, your thoughts on radiator covers. It feels uh, to me that it makes the room cooler. Thank you to everybody. Linda. OK, brilliant. Yes, do. Um, yeah, that's something. Is triple glazing worthwhile? Yes, it does. It does further reduce um, the reduction of heat. Uh, also has other properties in terms of cutting out noise, so issues around Heathrow Airport and so on. Um, you would need to look into it because with some of these, um, it really does depend on how how much money you've got to spend. And I would certainly say um, for anything like that, take advice and get at least three quotes, preferably on recommendation. What we don't do as a charity is recommend any particular providers. Uh, and that's something that wouldn't be covered by our scheme. But we would be able to, look, we're looking, in fact, it's something that we've been discussing, whether we can help people who are uh, vulnerable, whether we can do this, the, the cling film type thing. There's a question here, Susan, about what are your thoughts on radiator covers? It feels to me that it makes the room cooler. Um, 
I've got them. Um, I have got them that it does work. It does depend um, which one. I don't know if, if anybody, people can see, I'm not sure what people can see, but we use one um, and I'm not necessarily recommending this, but the one that we use is called Radflex and that does work really well. There are others um, that are not, I personally have not found them to be so efficient. Um, they're the sort of, I don't know how to describe it in a technical way, but they're bubbly and, and I don't think they work as well. Um, some of the other things that you can look at, and again, I'm not recommending quick grip, quick grip, it's just the one that we've got, is draft excluders. This is really, really effective um, and it's easy to remove. This is what I was talking about, which is the letterbox draft excluder, um, and they are really, really good. Um, they do make a big difference, and again, you can get lots of different ones. And then the light bulbs just look exactly like ordinary light bulbs. And they come in various different styles. And if you want them more old fashioned looked, you can get them that they look like that. Um, and all of those are worth doing. I don't know if anybody can see. Again, it's so, so easy to fit. And it comes in different widths. And this is the one that we use. But again, there's loads of different ones out there. So those are the sort of things we'd fit if we came to your home. Um, and as I say, if anybody knows of anybody, um, benefit from one of our home energy visits, then please do contact me on the details that are there. Ah, there's a question. Oh, yes, about... we are, yes, deflate, yes, we're not talking about radiator covers. We're talking about radiator oils. Yeah, radiator covers, no, they, and yes, you're quite right, I think they do reduce the heat. They have to have some sort of vent, and so obviously the heat isn't going to be as great, but that's not something that we would recommend or install. So I think that's more decorative. That's great. Um, are there any more questions from the audience at all? If not, um, a huge thank you for coming along to our event tonight and um, interacting with us and asking your questions. And a, few, a huge thank you to Susan for a really informative talk as well. Um, I definitely learnt a lot from that. So thank you. Um, and we hope to see you at some of our other events through the rest of Climate Week. So Climate Week is running till Sunday afternoon. Um, so in that time, we have an open forum at Orleans House. We have lots of different talks about, we actually have a talk about heritage buildings in conservation areas on Thursday so if that's something that you're interested in that is all in there as well we also have some activities some practical activities that you can get involved in from litter picks to bulb plantings on Sunday morning and then we have a fantastic panel talk on Sunday eve afternoon evening at the exchange in Twickenham so please do come along to some of our events all of our events for climate week are free and they are de delivered in partnership with the council um, and again, a huge thank you for coming tonight. Um, we will be sending out the slides to anyone that wants them, as Susan said, and we will be sending over some information. But if you do have any other questions in the meantime, um, you can get in touch with Susan or myself. It's just our names and then habitatsandheritage.org.uk. So it's Susan and Francesca if you do want to get in touch with us. But again, thank you. Have a really lovely rest of your evening. There is still half an hour left on another talk um, all about setting up energy groups and and um, if you're already in a group, how you might deliver an energy project and things like that. So if that's something of, of interest for you, there is still half an hour of that left. So please do pop on over to that. That can be found on Eventbrite as well. But if not, thank you very much and have a really lovely rest of your evening all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody.